everyone. Today's video is on how to harvest and process black walnuts. The black walnut uh, at this time of year in the fall is uh, producing its fruit. Looks like green golf balls as you saw during that intro segment there. And inside those uh, contains the black walnut. They're very flavorful and they're fairly easy to process, although it does require uh, a bit of time on your part to get them to the point where you can uh, store them for future use. So here's a close-up of a black walnut and uh, as you can see it's got kind of a soft shell on the outside. Inside there is the hard nut and inside that is the nut meat which is what you'll be using you know for your baking. When you smell it, it has kind of a citrus smell to it. It's actually very pleasant but you'll want to be very careful as there's a lot of um, black pigment in the black walnut. Um, a lot of people used to use this and still do uh, for dyeing things like fabric and whatnot. And some people even dye their hair with it. So um, when you work with the black walnut, you're going to want to wear protective clothing and I'll show you about that. And uh, be prepared for there to be a bit of a mess. So you want to work with them outside if you can. So I'm done uh, collecting um, the walnuts for today. Um, that's all I could get off of the tree. Otherwise I'd have to grab a ladder. So I'll just wait for the rest to fall down. A friend of mine, uh, gave me these ones. They're a little bit older. Um, I'll open them up and see what they look like inside. Um, but uh, yeah, I got a bit of processing to do. Here's some that I uh, grabbed a little earlier in the week and they're all wrinkly. Um, so I'll get the outer um, shells off of them. So things that we're gonna need, um, here's an apron, because um, this uh, walnut produces a really black juice um, within the outer shell. So an apron so you don't get uh, your clothes dirty. Um, I've got a meat tenderizer here and some rubber gloves. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just using this old anvil here. Uh, it sort of sits outside and gets rusty anyway. And I'm just going to use the uh, meat tenderizer here. I'm not going to use a spiky end but just the regular end. So you take your uh, meat tenderizer hammer and then you just sort of smash the outer shell. And then you go like that and out pops the nut. So that's cool, eh? So that's what the shell looks like. Um, it is really a deep brown stain that gets on your clothes and these rubber gloves. This is a really good thing to use. Um, it's an indelible dye, like a, a dark brown dye. So if you want to save these for later and you know boil them in some water to create a brown dye for whatever purpose, uh, that'd be great. It is a little smelly. It smells very citrusy. Um, inside the shell here there is a toxin and what it does is it inhibits plant growth um, you know for the you know so that this walnut could grow into a walnut tree it inhibits um, growth of everything else in the area so I was kind of wondering if I should save these maybe and put them in an area where I've got poison ivy maybe that'll kill them off or something anyway so for now I'm just gonna put them uh, down here and then I'll put them in the garbage after all the nuts have been uh, have the outer husk removed so the next step is to just sort of wash them and scrub them up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is cure them by drying them. All right, so we're just going to clean them up. You can see I've added some water here. And you see that brown dye in here? Like all over my gloves. So that's the stuff. Uh, I've heard some people actually dyed their hair with that stuff. But we're just going to clean off the uh, nuts. Now I'm just going to scrub a few of them. A little bit of water in here and dump them out. Just going to scrub some of the stuff off the shells here. All right, so I scrubbed them really well. I'm just gonna do one more wash, or a couple more washes. So now we'll just do a final rinse. See the water isn't as stained anymore. So the next step is uh, curing the walnuts in the shell. Um, so what we're going to do is just make a thin layer on a cookie sheet um, just to dry them out. So we're going to keep them in a dry spot for two weeks, cool out of direct sunlight. So you might dry them too quick I guess in the sunlight and crack them, I don't know. The references I uh, found told me to keep them out of the sun so that's what I'm going to do. All right, so there's my harvest. It's fairly small. Um, if you had a lot more, you can stack them, but no more than two or three deep. 
um, because you want the air to sort of circulate around them to dry out uh, the outer shell. All right, and then uh, we'll check back in in two weeks and see where we are with these guys. So there you go. Ooh, little piece fell out there. So they're very heavy. I took a hammer to smash this one. Um, but you can see what you'd expect, you know, these typical little blobs of walnut meat. Eventually when we crack these open later, when these shells are a little bit um, firmer, um, this should also be firmed up a little bit and then we'll pick it out and dry it as well. Um, but there you go, there's a little piece of it right here. It's pretty soft and mushy. So when we end up curing this nut meat, we'll have to dry that out because this is going to mold if you just sort of leave it like that and hope it's going to last for a few weeks, it won't. Um, right now it doesn't have that really strong walnutty taste. I tried a little bit of it. Over time, uh, as the nuts cure, they will develop that flavor. But I just want to show you the inside of the black walnut. Very cool. There's the outside and there's the inside. In my book, The Edible Wild Plants, a North American field guide to over 200 natural foods, I uh, looked up the black walnut's uh, nutritional content. And per 100 gram serving, if you look in this chart, it says the black walnuts, um, if you eat 10 grams of them, or that's three and a half ounces, it's 628 calories. Now, if you compare that to broiled beef, the same amount of broiled beef is 207 calories. So it's very calorie dense uh, per 100 grams. In terms of protein, uh, it's 20.5 grams. Compare that to the beef, which is 32 grams. So a little bit more, but still a very decent source of protein. Fat, it's 59 grams and your broiled beef is about seven grams. So the walnuts are extremely high in fat and protein. Um, so really, really good energy source. Carbs, 14.8 grams per 100 gram serving. Um, for the beef, uh, certainly there's no carbs there. So at least you're getting a good balance here with the walnut. So in terms of iron, it's actually higher than beef. So we have six milligrams per 100 gram portion. And again, if you look up here to beef, it's 3.9, so very good source of iron, especially for the ladies out on the trail. Uh, it is, you know, pretty low in salt. Uh, beef is 60 milligrams of salt per 100 grams, and walnuts are three milligrams. So we're about four days into the drying process, and it's coming along nicely. Um, we can really start to smell the walnutty smell to them. Um, one thing I noticed was a few of these guys are starting to get a bit of surface mold. So that's not good. It seemed like, and I've put them off to the side, but it was one particular side of the tray. And that was an area that was a little, not as ventilated. I had it on top of a cabinet behind a door and sort of there's some airflow obstruction on the one side. So I'm thinking the ones over here that I pull aside, they just have not dried well. They were all on this side of the pan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrub off the mold. And I think I might just put them in the oven at 175 for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes just to, finish up the drying process. Um, so it's a bit of an experiment. Uh, we'll see if that dries them a little bit better. We're about a half hour in and uh, you know the previously dried ones are doing well. These ones are still a little bit damp. So I'm gonna go probably another half an hour or so until they all feel very dry. There you go guys, they're all dried. So now what we're gonna do is just put them in a little mesh bag for storage for whenever we need it. Here's the finished product. I just used an old onion bag and a little clip uh, that I got from uh, Ikea actually, just to keep it nice and closed. So this way there's lots of air circulation so they don't go moldy on you. So I'll show you how tricky these are to crack. Um, some people try to use nutcrackers, it may not work as well. You may want to use like a hammer or something like that. I've just got uh, one of these walnuts stuck in a vise here and we'll just tighten it up. There we go. Oops. You see I've cracked it open. And what I did is I just cracked it sort of um, along its long axis there. So there's like this or the, the pointed ends there. I cracked it like that. So that way you can get the nut meat out easily. So you can see it's sitting right in there. So what I have here are a few of these little picks that you can pick up. I got this from Princess Auto. Use it for other things obviously than doing this. But then you just kind of go in there and you pick out the walnut meat. If it's difficult to get it out because there's a piece sort of stuck underneath, you can just go through and crack it again. There. I cracked it again and you can see these are the two pieces of shell and then there's a little piece of walnut that came out. 
So we'll continue on and do that with the rest. All right, let's give this a try. Mmm. It's a really strong walnut flavor. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think what I'll do with these walnuts is um, I'll crack a few of them open, get some of the nut meat out, and I'm going to make some hermit cookies because they're my favorite cookie, and uh, to make them with a the wild edible like the black walnut will make them extra special. All right, everyone, that's uh, today's show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, don't forget to leave them down below. And if you're not already a subscriber and you wish to do so, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and thumbs up for more videos like this. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Take care.